Our goal in this video is to talk about congruence modulo n, and so we're going to, we're going to fix an integer n, a positive integer, and we're going to ask this question, can we declare two integers a and b to be equivalent if they produce the same remainder when we divide them by n? So first let's explore this idea a little bit. So for example, let's fix n is equal to 7. Okay, um, let's think about what numbers have remainder 3. So for example, 3, when I divide it by 7, has remainder 3, because by the division algorithm I could write 3 as 7 times 0 plus 3. If I look at the integer 10, 10 has a remainder of 3, because I could write this as 7 times 1 plus 3. If I look at the integer, let's say, 24, 24 has a remainder of 3, because 24 is 7 times 3 plus 3. If I look at the integer, let's say, negative 11, well, this is just 7 times negative 2 plus 3. So we can see that all of these all of these numbers have a remainder of 3 when I divide them by 7. So let's explore this a little bit more. Um, one thing we can notice is that, well, I, I want to in some sense say that 3 and 10 are equivalent. I want to say that 3 and 24 are equivalent. I want to say that 10 and 24 are equivalent, so on and so forth. So what can I notice about some of these? Well, one thing I might notice is that 7 divides 10 minus 3. Right? 10 minus 3 is 7, so 7 divides 7. 7 divides 3 minus 3, because 7 divides 0. I might notice that 7 divides 24 minus 3, right? because 7 divides 21. I might notice that 7 divides negative 11 minus 24, right? because this is saying that 7 divides negative 35. And finally, I might notice something like 7 divides 10 minus negative 11. Right, this is just saying that 7 divides 21. Okay, so what I might notice is that 7 divides the difference of any of any two of these numbers, and so let's try to let's try to form formulate a definition based on this. So based on our example, we can formulate the following definition. I'll take a, b, and n to be integers, n to be positive, and I'll say that a is congruent to b modulo n, if and only if n divides a minus b. So this is going to be our definition. Okay, so what are some examples? Well, we can say, for example, that 3 is congruent to 7 modulo 4, since 4 divides 3 minus 7, right? 4 divides negative 4. I can say that 10 is congruent to negative 2 mod 6, because 6, because 6 divides 10 minus negative 2, right? This is just saying that 6 divides 12. I can say that 3 is congruent to 0 modulo 3 because 3 divides 3 minus 0. All right, 3 divides 3. I might notice, for example, that 5 is not congruent to 2 modulo 6 since 6 does not divide 5 minus 2. All right, 6 does not divide 3. Okay, so this is the definition we're going to work with, and we're going to prove that congruence modulo n is an equivalence relation. So the very first thing we're going to prove is that congruence modulo n is an equivalence relation. So what exactly are we proving? Well, we want to show that for all integers a, b, and c, we have the three properties of an equivalence relation, namely one, that this relation is reflexive, so that for all integers a, a is congruent to a modulo n. We want to show that it's symmetric, so that if a is congruent to b mod n, then b is congruent to a mod n. And we want to show that it's transitive, so if a is congruent to b mod n, and b is congruent to c mod n, then a is congruent to c mod n. So let's begin our proof. Okay, so first let's prove the reflexive property. Well, what do we know? We know that n always divides 0, so n must divide a minus a. Hence, we have that a is congruent to a modulo n, and so our, reflation, uh, our relation is reflexive. Okay, pretty straightforward. Let's show that it's symmetric. So suppose that a is congruent to b modulo n. Well, what do we know? We know then n must divide a minus b. Okay, well, what is our definition of divides? We can say so, 
there exists an integer j such that b minus rather a minus b is equal to n times j. Well, then if I multiply both sides by negative 1, I get that b minus a is equal to n times negative j. And so n divides b minus a. Hence, I can conclude that b is congruent to a modulo n. And there we go, we have symmetry. Now we'll make some space and show that this re relation is also transitive. Okay, so to show that the relation is transitive, I'll suppose that a is congruent to b mod n and b is congruent to c mod n. Well, what do we know? We know then n divides a minus b and n divides b minus c. Okay, so I can say so. There exists integers j and k such that a minus b is equal to nj and b minus c is equal to n times k. Okay, so what I'm going to now do is I'd like to get something about a minus c, right? I'd like to show that a is congruent to c mod n, so I'd like to show that a minus c is divisible by n. So what I'd like to do is get rid of the b's. I'd like to say something about a minus c. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two equations together. I'm going to add their left-hand sides and I'm going to add their right-hand sides. So when I do this, I get a minus b plus b minus c is equal to nj plus nk. And we immediately notice that the b's cancel, so this can be written as a minus c is equal to, and on the right-hand side we can factor out the n's, so I could write this as n times j plus k. So I can conclude that hence n divides a minus c, right? We see that a minus c is n times some integer, and so a is congruent to c modulo n. All right, so now we have an equivalence relation, and we could talk about equivalence classes and work with the equivalence classes of this relation. Okay, so we're ready to define equivalence classes and talk a little bit about equivalence classes. So we'll fix an n in z, n positive, and we'll let a be an integer, what is the equivalence class of A? The equivalence class of A is all the integers B that are congruent to A modulo N. Okay, so what do we know about equivalence classes? Well, just given what we know about equivalence relations, we know a few things. We know that the equivalence class of A is going to be the same as the equivalence class of B, and this is if and only if A is congruent to B modulo N. Right. Once we have an equivalence relation, we have all the properties of equivalence relations that we proved earlier. We also know that the equivalence class of A intersect the equivalence class of B is equal to the empty set if and only if A is not congruent to B modulo n. Finally, we also know that the integers can be written as the union of these equivalence classes. Okay, so th these are some properties that these equivalence classes satisfy. Now, you might ask, well, what do these equivalence classes look like? Give me some examples. So let's talk about some examples. Um, let's, let's fix, for example, n is equal to 5. Well, if I fix n is equal to 5, I could say, what's the equivalence class of 0? Well, if I think about this, these are all the integers b and z, such that b is equivalent to 0 mod 5. Okay, so let's rewrite the set. These are all the integers b, such that 5 divides b minus 0, or we could rewrite b minus 0 just as b. These are all the integers b and z, such that 5 divides b. So these are all the integers that are multiples of 5. So we could write out what these look like. So these are 0, 5, 10, 15, so on and so forth. So it's going to be an infinite set, minus 5, minus 10, so on and so forth. And one thing we know is that this is the same as the equivalence class of 5, it's the same as the equivalence class of 10, it's the same as the equivalence class of negative 15. So there are infinitely many ways of representing this set. If I choose any multiple of 5, I'm going to produce the same set. If I take 5 and I ask what's the equivalence class of 5, I'll get the same set as taking 0 and producing the equivalence class of 0. Right? And this just follows from this this portion right here, from this theorem right here. Okay, now we might ask, well, what's the equivalence class of 1, for example? The equivalence class of 1 
are all the integers b and z such that b is congruent to 1 modulo 5. And we'll rewrite this. This is going to be all the integers b and z such that 5 divides b minus 1. Okay, so what is the set? These are all the integers b and z such that b minus 1 can be written as 5 times j for some j and z. And if we write this a little bit more cleanly, these are all the integers b and z such that b is equal to 5j plus 1 for some j and z. Okay, so what do the elements of this set look like? Well, let's think about it. If I take j equal to 0, I produce the number 1. If I take j equal to 1, I produce the number 6. If I take j is equal to 2, I produce the number 11. If I take j is equal to 3, I produce the number 16. And I go up this way. On the other hand, I could also take j to be negative. If I take j to be negative 1, I get negative 5 plus 1, so I produce the number negative 4. If I take j to be negative 2, I produce negative 9, and so on and so forth. I might also notice that the equivalence class of 1 is the same as the equivalence class of 6. It's the same as the equivalence class of 11. It's the same as the equivalence class of negative 9. Right? Recall the idea is that the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of b if and only if a is congruent to b modulo n. So I can continue in this way and produce all of my equivalence classes. So I can produce so we've produced the equivalence class of 0 and the equivalence class of 1. I can continue similarly and produce the equivalence class of 2. I can produce the equivalence class of 3 and I could produce the equivalence class of 4. Then I might notice that well 5 is in the equivalence class of 0, so if I want to produce the equivalence class of 5 it's the same as the equivalence class of 0. I notice that 6 is in the equivalence class of 1, so if I want to produce the equivalence class of 6, that's the same as the equivalence class of 1. I notice that 7 is in this set, so this is the same as the equivalence class of 7. I notice that 8 is in this set, so this is the equivalence class of 8. I notice 9 is in here, so this is the equivalence class of 9. And I'm just going to keep cycling through. 10 is in here, so the equivalence class of 10 is the same as the equivalence class of 0. 11 is in here, so this is the equivalence class of 11. This is 12. This is 13. This is 14. And this goes on forever. Right? So we can continue this process forever. And we'll see that our equivalence classes start repeating eventually. And we can only produce five unique equivalence classes. So these five unique equivalence classes, we're actually going to give them a name. So we're going to call this set Z mod 5. And so this is a set. It contains five elements, and the elements of the set are sets themselves. So the objects that live inside the set are themselves sets. So this is a set we're going to call Z mod 5. One thing to notice about this set is these numbers 0 through 4, they capture all the possible remainders when we divide by 5, right? The remainder has to be bigger than or equal to 0 and strictly less than 5. So that gives us the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 for remainders. The other thing to notice is if we look at any of these equivalence classes, we see that the numbers in this one are all the numbers that give a remainder of 0 when I divide by 5. The numbers in this equivalence class are all numbers that give a remainder of 1 when I divide by 5. So on and so forth. The numbers in this equivalence class are the numbers that give a remainder of 2 when I divide by 5. These are the ones that give a remainder of 3, and these down here give a remainder of 4. So in some sense, what we're doing is we're saying that the equivalence class of 10 is the same as the equivalence class of 0 because 10 has a remainder of 0 when we divide by 5. The equivalence class of 12 is the same as the equivalence class of 2 because 12 has a remainder of 2 when we divide by 5. So we see that we're capturing this notion, but now we need to formalize this. Okay, so let's formalize this. So I'm going to fix an in a positive integer n, and I'll say if a is an integer, and I've written a as nq plus r for some integers q and r and z, then the equivalence class of a is the same as the equivalence class of r. So in some sense, we're trying to say that, well, if we restrict r to be bigger than or equal to 0 and less than n, we're saying that a is equivalent to its remainder. OK, so let's prove this. So let's prove this. Well, the first thing we know is that a minus r is equal to nq. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my assumption and rewriting it. Well, so I can say that n divides a minus r, and we have 
that a is congruent to r mod n. And now we recall our property about equivalence classes. So the property we want to recall is that a is equivalent to b mod n if and only if the equivalence class of a is, equiv is equal to the equivalence class of b, if these are the same set. So this is our property about equivalence classes. So what, I, what can I conclude? I can say, hence, the equivalence class of a is equal to the equivalence class of r, and I finished my proof. Okay, this has an important corollary. One important quick corollary is, of this is, well, if we restrict r to be bigger than or equal to zero and less than n, so if we want to study the case where r is the remainder, we can say, okay, well, there are exactly n equivalence classes, exactly n equivalence classes, modulo n, right? Because there are exactly n remainders. There is the equivalence class of zero, there's the equivalence class of one, and there's everything up to and including the equivalence class of n minus one. So these are my only possible choices for the remainder. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a set. I'm going to call this z mod n, and it's going to be the set of equivalence classes. So the objects in the set are my equivalence classes. So this is a set with n elements in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to study some of the properties of the set. We're going to define arithmetic on the set. What does it mean to add two equivalence classes? What does it mean to multiply them? How, does, how do these operations behave? Do these operations even make sense? So we'll be, we'll be studying this in the upcoming videos.